Hello and welcome to another on location vlog and today we're at a very special location the Lost Gardens of Heligan. Now I'm not actually going to go into the Lost Gardens I've got a very particular subject in mind which is on the outskirts of Heligan so hopefully I won't have to pay to get into the gardens. Uh, let's get going but before that let's have some coffee. Catch you in a minute. This is what they call uh, the path to the wider estate. Uh, the wider estate being essentially the outlying segments of the Heligan estate, which uh, actually sort of tag on to a footpath all the way to Mavagissi in the far distance, but also can loop back round to another place on the road, the other side of the estate. So it's a, a long circular walk, basically. As you can see, this location is well blessed with trees of age and interesting growth habits. So uh, let's go and see the one that I'm going to take a photograph of. So here we are. This is the magnificent gnarled twisted oak of some vintage. It is being well photographed, but I'm going to try and put a different spin on it. So I've done some metering and then my first subject is going to be this magnificent um, bowl of the tree with its broken off branch and its uh, calluses and everything. I mean, just look at it. It's like a living, breathing thing, which of course it is. But you would think it would be move like an ant in Tolkien. Uh, so yes, metering. It says an eight at F16 for the mid grey of the trunk which is pretty much I've looked at the darker areas and they're about two to three stops darker so I think we'll just add another stop for safety's sake and we'll do a quarter of a second at f16 light is hazy there's a little bit of sun breaking through every now and then just a tiny bit of directional light from more or less behind me Let's get this first one in the can and then I'll look for something perhaps a little bit more adventurous. Right, I think we're ready to go. So the composition is the leaning trunk of the tree with one further distance and the path just off to the left of it. I've decided that I want the tree behind to be very slightly out of focus. So I've, like my hero Steve Onions, um, opened up a stop to F11. So that makes me at an eighth of a second at F11. Right, let's do this exposure. So, duck slide out. Tripod's all set up, it's level. Okay, that was probably more like a record shop. Let's see if we can find something a bit more adventurous. Right, slide back in. Now for this first shot, I'm only moderately happy with it. Although I like the shape of the tree and the um, interesting uh, features in the trunk, I'm not so happy with the brighter highlights at the top right and top left. Next composition setup, which is broadly the trunk leaning that way with that group of trees behind it in the distance. Now I've opened up to F8 to try and blur those out. And I might even try F5.6 as I've got the scope to do that, to allow a bit of separation. I'm on the standard lens, horizontal composition, trying to keep as much of the sky out. It is now spitting with rain, which in some ways is helpful, but obviously I'll have to vacate to things getting a little bit too wet. Um, using uh, Kentmere Pan 100 and I've metered for 160th of F8. So I'm going to change the shutter speed now. 160th F8. Dark slide out. Let's take the picture. Now, I think I'll try one with a greater depth of field. So, two stops down, 30th, 15th. Now, oh, no, it's, we'll have to do that again. It says it was on the wrong aperture, it was on F22, so that'll be very underexposed. So, wind on, shutter cock cable release, make the exposure. Wind on again, down to 15, so 11, 16. 
dark slide still out let's make that exposure interesting to see how those three shots come out and whether the, the f22 one will be so under exposure won't get anything but it's interesting to see the latitude of these black and white films is really good now for this group of images all variations on the same composition I've just tried a little bit of a difference for each one. So the first one is the one with the slightly more blurred background at f8. The second has slightly more depth of field at f11, sorry, f16. And the third one has had the brand new and uh, slightly um, experimental feature of background blur in Lightroom applied. I don't quite think it works at the moment but it's looking promising and overall I prefer this composition to the first one. I think we're about done for this afternoon. I think I do need to come back when the lighting conditions are different. Uh, certainly in the morning the sun will be coming from the other way so we'll illuminate the side of the tree is darkest at the moment and it would be nice to have some mist that could uh, help to give the background some separation. Thanks for watching this video on location. Keep coming back for more. Bye for now.